Hey golfers, do you struggle with that dreaded hook? Less curve on the golf ball is always going to help you to hit more fairways, and more fairways is going to lead to lower scores. Today we're going to discuss how to reduce that curve to the left and straighten out your driver. Well, today we have the left side of the golf course fairly well covered here. So I got that big hook going on. So let's explain why the ball is hooking. So let's get right down to the numbers. So if we take a look, you can see today that my club path is slightly in to out. So slightly in to out, positive means to the right, negative means to the left. So positive 1.7 is telling me that my club path is slightly in to out. You will notice with my face angle, my face angle number right there is negative. So that tells me that that club face is closed at impact. So when you have a difference with a positive club path to the right and a face angle that is negative to the left, you are going to have a much larger difference in your face to path numbers. You will notice my face to path here was 3.3 .3 to the left. With the driver, because there is not much loft on the driver, it really exaggerates your misses. So if you start generating more and more differences between your face angle and your club path, your misses are going to get a lot larger. So you'll notice even with only a face to path number here of negative 3.3, that I generated over 100 feet of curve to the left. So my curve was 111 feet to the left and the spin axis was negative 41 degrees. It's a lot of curve, it's a lot of golf shots with the golf ball diving out of the sky, and we're really missing out on a lot of carry distance and, and distance that we can potentially get with the driver. Sometimes it can be okay to play a hook or a drawer if the golf course is fairly dry because the ball will roll a long way, but most golf courses usually you rely on your carry distance, so carry distance is important. So you will notice when I hit those drives that my launch angle was around about 10 degrees. But more importantly, if we take a look at the height and the landing angle, very, very low. I was only hitting the driver 54 feet in the air with a landing angle of 23.8 degrees. So let's jump to hitting some shots and explaining the differences to why the ball is curving to left and how to straighten out that golf ball. Well, back to normal. So that last shot that I hit had a lot less curve to the left on it. How did I get there? Well, you will notice that my club speed was still the same. We're talking 106 to 107 miles an hour. Ball speed was quite a bit higher. Efficiency was higher, but the launch angle was much higher. The launch angle, the height, the landing angle was much higher. That's because that club face was not as closed at impact. So we went from a launch angle around about 10 degrees to a launch angle about 13 and a half. Because the ball launched higher, the ball carried further. So we went from an average carry distance when I was hitting hooks at only 215 yards in the air to 200, almost 280 yards on that first golf swing. The height almost doubled, so we went from 54 feet in the air to 96 on that last golf swing. We didn't change the loft on the driver or anything like that. Only thing that changed was the launch angle and then the dynamic loft because the club face was not as closed at impact. So it's really impressive to take a look at those swing numbers on that first golf swing. Check out the club path and the face angle and the face to path relationship. Negative 0.2, negative 0.1, and 0.2. Well, what does that mean? That basically tells me that my club path was almost as neutral as it possibly can get. 
0.0 would be perfect. My face angle, you, know, you can't get better than that. That's, that's exceptionally good. So because those numbers were matching up and very, very close to each other with regards to very neutral numbers, you will notice what happened to the curve. We went from curving the ball about 111 feet to the left, so that shot had a baby little fade to it, only 17 feet of curve to the right, and that spin axis was much better at only 2.8. So what did I do to make this adjustment on this golf swing? Well, the first thing was I was able to get my shoulders a little bit more square to the target. When I was hitting the hook, what was happening is I was getting that, those shoulders a little bit too far closed. And what was happening is that's causing my club path to be in to out. But what happened was that club face was getting very, very closed at impact. You'll notice when the club face is closed at impact, you're going to reduce the loft on the club. So that pushed the ball down, and that's why the ball only, only carried a little bit over 200 yards. There was one shot, that real duck hook that I hit, that dove straight onto the ground. And that's because at impact, that club face is very, very closed, which caused the ball to kind of push down onto the ground there too. I also made an adjustment with my grip. So a lot of times I see someone that, some people that hook the ball too much, when that top hand gets a little bit too strong, too far over, the bottom hand a little bit too far under. So if the, you have a very, very strong grip, that club face is really easy to turn over and you're gonna close that club face down, which is gonna cause the ball to go straight left on you. So all I did was kind of neutralize my grip a little bit, getting my grip in a more neutral position where I can see two knuckles on my, on my left hand. You can see a little bit of the logo on the glove, looking down at it. And that will cause the club face to be a lot straighter at impact. Now keep in mind, these are great tips, but everyone swings the golf ball differently. The most important thing is to get that club path and that face angle to be very, very close together. Everyone swings the ball differently. Some people may set up with a closed club face and at impact have that club face square. Some people may set up with an open club face at, at, at set up and then get that club face closed coming through to, straight, to straighten out their ball flight. The most important thing is club face angle. So we can get that club face angle to be very, very square, square to your club path. That is going to be what is going to cause the ball to curve less. End of the day, whatever you do, try and get that club face square to your path. Okay, so five shots with a much better face-to-path relationship. And we'll take a look at the difference between my club path and my face angle compared to those shots that I hooked the driver with. We'll notice that my club speed was within about one mile an hour in difference between each, each other. So let's be a good comparison to compare the difference between a face-to-path that is left or a face to path that is more neutral with a driver. So first thing you'll notice is the huge change in carry distance. So we went from averaging a carry distance of 215 to a carry distance of 279. That's huge, that is a much further drive. And why did that happen? Well, it's to do with the launch angle. So we'll notice the launch angle with that closed club face was 10 degrees. With a much squarer club face, the launch angle was 14 and a half degrees. So we didn't change the loft on the driver at all. This is still a nine degree driver. But what happened was at impact, the club face was not closed. When that club face is closed, you're going to reduce the loft on the driver. And we can kind of see that on the height and the landing angle as well. We went from 54 feet in the air on those hooks to 104 feet in the air with the straight balls. So that's double, that's basically double in height. So more carry distance with a much more optimal height window. We can see the landing angle too. So the landing angle at 36 degrees versus 23 degrees. 
It's going to cause the ball to run a little bit less, but we're not so much sacrificing that much distance because, let's face it, what golf course would really have the ball roll out from 215 to 262? That's a lot of roll. Maybe a linksy golf course that hasn't had a lot of rain, but I know definitely in the U.S. a lot of these golf courses are fairly soft. Carry distance is important. And with that club face square versus close, the dynamic loft for sure is in a much better optimal window. But really what it comes down to is club path and face angle and the face to path relationship. So let's take a look at the differences between the hooks and the straight balls. So you will notice club path. When I was hooking the ball, my club path was a little bit more into, into out. When I was hitting a much straighter ball, my club path was negative 0.5, so pretty close to zero. So we improved my club path by getting those shoulders just a little bit squarer and those feet just a little bit squarer to my target. Face angle. Face angle is the most important number to control if you want to reduce the curve. Well, we'll take a look at the face angle with the less curve shots. 0.0. .0. Doesn't get any better than that. So when my face angle is 0.0, .0 and my club path is negative 0.5, we're going to have very, very little numbers and much less curve. If we take a look at the face to path, we went from negative 3.3 to actually positive 0.5, which is going to cause the ball to curve minimally at all. We'll notice we went from 111 feet of right to left curve to 19 feet of right to left curve. That spin access dropped from 41 to 3.9. So it's quite the difference. We can see here on the right, you can see the dispersion pattern. Quite a difference there. Now it's kind of interesting because I did have there, there was one shot in there that I feel like I mishit. And then that's that one that's uh, the furthest one in the yellow circle. But even still, you'll notice because I was in a much better optimal window with regards to my club path and, and face angle, the ball still went further than those other hooks there too. So that's total distance. You can see much more straighter golf shots. So finally, I want to touch on hit location. Hit location is very, very important. Even though these drivers are large and forgiving these days, if you do catch the ball on the toe, the ball still has a better chance to hook. If you catch it a little bit closer to the middle of the club face, or even slightly heely, the ball will then fade a little bit for you there as well. So I want to bring up the hit locations really quickly just to show the differences in the curve and where I was catching on the club face to wrap things up. So hit location also is very important. One recommendation I do to pay attention to your hit location is to grab like Dr. Scholl's foot spray to spray it on the club face. Just to kind of see the impact location. It's a great way to check out how good a ball striker you really are and can pay attention to some trends. So first let's talk about this first shot that I hit that had less curve. You will notice that my club path, my face angle and face to path numbers, pretty much zero. My, my face to path number was positive 0.2. When you have a positive 0.2 face to path number, you may expect a slight little draw. We're talking very minimal curve to left. But you will notice this shot, the ball actually curved 17 feet to the right. That is because we'll notice that the hit location ever so slightly on the heel of the golf club. So when you catch it slightly on the heel of the club, fa club face, the ball is going to just going to kick that face just a little bit open, which will curve the ball, cause the ball to curve to the right. At the other end of the spectrum, I want to bring up a shot here where I curved the ball really far kind of to the left. So you'll notice here, hit location when I was catching the ball a little bit more toey, that the ball kind of dove to the left. And I want to take a look at the spin axis. Spin axis, negative 80.0. That's because I caught the ball fairly high up on the club face and high toe, which is going to cause the ball to kind of dive out of the sky and dive straight left. So that ball didn't really stand a chance. It was very, very low ball flight and it was straight left. And that spin access, that is a lot of, a lot of curve there to the, to the left on, on, that, on that golf ball. That's because it was exaggerated by catching on the toe. So hit location is the final piece to the puzzle when it comes to making sure that you can hit the ball a little bit straighter. Alignment's very important. 
grip is also very important. But where you catch on the club face definitely influences the direction the ball goes. I really hope this helps you understand why you may hit hooks with your driver. Stay tuned for other videos that we're gonna be putting up on our channel that will help improve your golf game.